Thank you all. Thank you for joining our webinar. We're seeing that customers who have invested in the Click platform, which is a phenomenal platform, of course, uh, are looking to extend their investments in these times with, when planning and forecasting are so very important right across the business spectrum. And this has become really essential to their businesses in this time. Three years ago, we partnered with Jedox, who are a modern enterprise performance planning platform, or EPM as uh, is, is known in the industry. And Click uh, partner with them as well, and they have won several awards in the Click ecosystem. They have a footprint of about 2,000 odd customers. The beauty of the software is it has Excel-like features. Strangely enough, over 85% of companies are still using Excel as a foundation layer for their planning process. So the learning curve from planning with Excel to Jedox is not a huge one. And the software fosters self-service. So when speed and agility are of essence, then Jedox is quite easy to use and seamlessly integrates with Click, as you will see when, as the demo will cover. Although the demo will be done at breakneck speed, there's a lot more to it. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Martin Overton. Martin is a senior consultant at Jedox, who is a great friend of data technology, as most of you are on this call. Martin. Thank you, Gus. Uh, thank you for that introduction. Um, yeah, it's my uh, my pleasure today to, uh, to to show you Jedox and Jedox working in conjunction with uh, with Click. What we're going to actually do is we're going to see a couple of things. I'm just going to spend two or three minutes at the beginning, just showing you a Jedox and Click Sense working together, so you can just get a flavour of the UI integration and also uh, the data integration, two two way data integration between Jedox and Click, and then we'll focus on Jedox. And we'll look at uh, some of the specific planning capabilities of Jedox. And today we'll focus on uh, scenario analysis. So I'm sure a lot of you have been grappling lately with, uh, uh, you know, changing business plans. Um, what if analysis, you know, what if we furloughed these stuff? What does this mean for our, um, our revenues? Um, and we can cover that in uh, in Jedox. And then again, we'll use the power of click to uh, uh, to see how we can analyze those different versions of our, our business plan uh, that we come up with. Final slide before uh, we jump to the demo, I just thought it was worth me giving an overview of, of what Jedox is and, and how it works. So Jedox is a, a multi-dimensional um, modeling tool, really a development tool for, for modeling uh, uh, financial and non-financial planning uh, requirements in, in the system. So at the center uh, sits the Jedox OLAP server. This is a in-memory cubing technology. Uh, the way we interface uh, with that uh, server is either through Office, uh, uh, so Microsoft Excel, Word or PowerPoint, normally through Jedox Web, that's what we'll see most of today, so through a web interface, uh, but also possibly through a, a mobile device as well, and Jedox has native mobile apps. On the other end, of course, uh, we talk about getting data in and out of Jedox. So Jedox also includes a fully fledged ETL tool, but a business friendly one called Jedox Integrator. You see that at the bottom of the screen. And that allows us to bring data from really any source system, whether it's a cloud-based system like Salesforce um, or a, an ERP or, or CRM system to bring in your uh, customers, your, your chart of accounts, uh, et cetera. And we also have a specific approved SAP uh, connector, so a certified connector to, uh, uh, to SAP. Uh, on the other side, in terms of uh, taking data out for reporting uh, and, uh, and analysis and consuming in different platforms, you know, we support a number of uh, reporting technologies, but uh, primarily on, on our, on our main focus is with Click, of course, and that's what we'll see today. So we'll see how we can take uh, those different scenarios and plans that we create and analyze them in Click. 
Jedox also has a, a marketplace. So uh, we'll talk a little bit later on about how you can begin and how you can build models with Jedox. But one option is that there's lots of pre-built content for common scenarios like sales planning, uh, HR planning, P&L, balance sheet, cash flow. In fact, the demo, you're, the, the core of the demo you're going to see today uh, is based around pre-built content in the marketplace, which has been integrated together and adopted. So I would say 80% of it comes from the uh, marketplace models, which give you a fast start uh, with, uh, with, with Jedox. Okay, so let's move on to the, uh, uh, to the demo. Uh, so first of all, I'm gonna show you um, uh, just a very simple dashboard in Click. Uh, and what you see on this dashboard is you see some obviously very simple click visualizations around the outside. You're going to see much nicer ones later. Uh, but the grid you see here, uh, this is actually Jedox running inside click. And I, I'm just showing you this to give you a, an idea of the data integration and uh, simple planning capabilities of Jedox before we move on to the, uh, to the more detailed scenario planning example. So what do we see? We see that in click already we've got in this year, 2018, a little old, but it, it doesn't matter. We've got 12 months of budget data loaded, and we've got three months of actuals loaded. So where does Jedox come in? Well, Jedox allows you to do right back to do what if analysis. So it's going to allow us here to complete this forecast. But as you see in Jedox at the moment, we have no data. So the first thing I want to do is I want to grab that data from click. So we're using the Jedox integrator that I mentioned behind the scenes to talk to the Click APIs to bring that data from Click to Jedox. And I now see my uh, budget for 2018 has been loaded and also my um, Q1 uh, actuals here. So this 26K of uh, actuals uh, so far year to date. So what Jedox allows us to do, if I uh, activate planning here, is of course do right back, but so with some planning uh, smarts. So this is a very simplified example. But what I can do here, for example, is I can combine my budget with uh, actuals. And we actually see something here called version blending because what I've done on this forecast version that I'm looking at, I've taken nine months of budget and blended it with three months of actual data. And from that point, I can adjust accordingly. So of course I could navigate up and down the hierarchies, but in the interest of time, I'm just gonna change uh, a couple of numbers at the top level. So let's put 1000 in there for um, you know, clothing in, in Q3. Could obviously break that down to a monthly uh, level to an individual item of, of, of clothing, you know, but just showing some simple data entry. And of course, I can, uh, in Jedox, I can capture narrative as well. So if I just say forecast complete there. So this is Jedox running within Click, rendered in this, uh, in this widget here. Uh, but what I'm also then able to do is move data in the other direction. So having done that uh, forecast, I can push the data back to click now. You see the forecast uh, version is loaded and I can do a side-by-side -side, uh, comparison of uh, my forecast uh, against budget. And uh, you'll see the slightly higher numbers in Q3 there where I made this adjustment. If for example, I click on components here in this chart, not only are the click widgets and charts uh, synchronized to components, but you see I've also drilled down into, uh, into components within, within Jedox as well. And I can remove that uh, selection. So you see a fully integrated process. And of course we could do the analysis in click, you know, and then when, uh, let's put a, a real bigger number in like 1 million, you see the shortcuts for 1 million, K for thousands. Push that back to click just so you can see that the data is, uh, you know, going through uh, the system and into click and we see a quite defined uh, change uh, there. Okay, so that's a simple case of um, uh, the integration between the products. Uh, but what I want to move to now is more of a, a realistic current business scenario. So I'll just switch browsers. Um, we're, looking at, we're looking at click again, uh, but I'm just gonna show you at the start of this demo, uh, what we have here, this again is Jedox running within click. We have a, a, a budget uh, and we have a revised budget. And currently there's no data in the uh, revised budget 
at that we are looking at. And so when we look at the other charts and click, which we'll come back to at the end of the at the end of the demo, you'll see that we have no data for revised our budget. So what we're going to do is we're going to flip to Jedox now. So let's go to Jedox and let's look at that same um, simplified profit and loss report within Jedox. Okay, so again, so this is what you saw in click, exactly the same thing, the same live report. So switch to budget revise, you see there's no data there. So what have I set up here? So I'm working on a um, um, some some simple data. So I only put data in the 2020 budget for revenue uh, and some admin expenses. Uh, and into the admin expenses, there's also some salaries that feed into that. So if I just give you a picture uh, of what we're going through here. Um, so of course, the scenario being that we did the budget for 2020 sort of last um, November, uh, December time. Uh, and of course, 2020 looks a lot different to how we envisaged it might look for obvious reasons. And now really, you know, we could do a simple um, reforecast, but we really need to revisit the budget as I'm sure many of you guys have been, have been doing in light of these changes. So just to show what an integrated planning scenario looks like in an enterprise performance management system like Jedox, you can see here we've got a sales planning um, module. Um, that feeds a couple of things. First of all, it feeds the revenue lines in the P&L model. Uh, also out of the sales plan, we can do production and purchasing, uh, for example. And we're gonna focus on sales plan in this demo along with HR. So HR, of course, the headcounts, the salaries, the labor costs, that feeds into a cost center model, which again feeds into P&L. So we'll get a, a new P&L. And then from there, we're gonna project a new balance sheet because we might want to change some uh, some of the rules of the balance sheet, like how we collect our, our cash, how we pay um, our um, the money we owe to other companies. We might want to change the terms there. And then ultimately, we want to look at our cash flow and make sure in our new scenario, uh, the business is still going to be viable uh, in 2020. Okay, so as I start, said, we'll start with the uh, with the sales planning. Actually, first of all, I'm going to set the um, revised budget for 2020. So I'll just um, come in here and I can have as many versions and scenarios as I like in a model. So in this case, I'm going to focus on the UK business. I'm just going to take a copy of the 2020 budget uh, and copy that into a version I pre-created called budget revised. Of course, I can have many best case, worst case, this case, that case. Um, but I'm just going to uh, I'm just going to copy that uh, that data over so we can work on the budget revised version independently of the um, of the budget version. This, of course, is copying all the data throughout the model and through all those integrated uh, plans. So as this report um, uh, refreshes, now we now see we've got the same data in both versions of the plan. So first thing I want to do is go and adjust the revenue plan. Now, of course, in Jedox, we could be a lot more detailed around this. We could have a workflow in place so that each um, product manager or each um, store manager, if we're talking about uh, our, our customers or our retail outlets, you know, could enter their data in a bottom up fashion. I'm just going to be rather crude here because I, I want the focus to be on uh, the changing scenarios. So as you can see, I'm working on the budget revised version of Bikers UK and the UK business. Okay. And as you can see in these bicycle products that we've got here, um, road bikes are our biggest um, um, uh, product line. These are the number of units. Uh, you can see the breakdown by product, but I'm just going to make some changes at a, at a fairly high, uh, high level. So uh, let's say, for example, that um, we expect our revenue uh, April through December to reduce by 60%. Painful, I know, but just an example. So I can highlight those figures. I enter a shortcut. Uh, actually, I entered hash hash plus 60%, not minus 60%. So let's uh, 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 correct that. And let's take 80% um, uh, off of this new uh, value. So 
Ash hash minus 80%, reduce that new value by 80%. I'm just looking for some change numbers and, and, and significantly lower numbers here. Okay, but maybe, you know, part of the way through March is when we expected that we were going to be um, uh, affected. So maybe I want to move 2K of that 3864 um, to December. So to 2020-12. So you see the your kinds of things I can move here. So that 1835 in December uh, will be uplifted by 2000 and I reduce that from March. So I'm allocating uh, uh, units that I expect to sell from one month to, to another. And that could be done down any dimension. I could allocate between products, between suppliers, uh, etc. The key thing is I've just crudely uh, uh, lowered the, uh, uh, the plan. And by the way, um, just to show uh, Excel, I think I've got um, this example in uh, uh, in Excel. If I just open a blank uh, workbook here, I'll bring it onto the uh, to the correct screen in a moment. Excel over once it's loaded. Yeah, so I'll bring Excel over onto the screen. Yeah, because Gus did mention that uh, you know Jedox is uh, also builds on uh, on the power of Excel and your existing investments. So I think in here in my sales planning cube, I have that. Same version as a, as a simple, I didn't spend any time formatting this Excel report, but you will, uh, if I go to the, uh, um, to the UK on my customer dimension here, you should recognize the, uh, um, uh, the same numbers on the budget revised version. Looking at road bikes, you can see uh, these same figures. So even if I make a change from Excel, let's say in April, I make it uh, 2000, units and go back to the uh, to the web we will see those 2000 units reflected in april but the key thing is i've changed my sales plan that's integrated on the revenue lines to my p l and i'll now go back to the uh, to the p l and we'll see the uh we'll see the effect of that so again if i compare my budget to my revised budget you can see we're down from 21 to 10 million on expected uh, revenue. So next example I want to show you is an HR example. And by the way, in Jedox, uh, we can plan uh, any financial metrics. We can plan uh, uh, any non-financials um, as well. But another common one that people use Jedox for is HR planning. So, you know, these admin expenses here, there's some HR costs that feed into that. Let's just go and have a look at, uh, uh, at these HR costs. Okay, so I'm just going to make sure I've got uh, a cost center collected because I'll plan my staff by uh, by cost center. So let's have a look in the UK management cost center. And you can see here I had three staff planned in the 2020 budget in this cost center. Um, so one of them was a new hire. Uh, and uh, in light of uh, obviously economic changes, we're on a hiring freeze. So the first thing I'm going to do is take that new hire out of the plan. Okay, so you see the headcount and FTE status down here. I'm just going to remove that new hire from the plan and any associated costs we planned for that new hire will be taken out as well. So you see the headcount come down to, uh, uh, to two. Um, and then maybe we want to play around with a scenario of furloughing some stuff. So not to pick on Sully, but just as an example, uh, let's say that we, uh, we're happy to, to pay the extra uh, 20% that the government won't pay for uh, Sully's salary. So we want to furlough Sully from April to July. So I can reduce the headcount in April by 0.8 and bring that back in uh, in July. Now, of course, Jedox is flexible. I could do more advanced modeling here. So we could take account of, um, um, you know, the uh, uh, the salary limits that the government will pay, etc. Uh, but this is obviously by, by way of example. So you can now see the effect of my staff in this cost center. Uh, you know, my FTE status drops to 1.2 uh, through March through June, uh, and this FTE and then picks up again. And this FTE status is used to calculate uh, salaries. So if we go look now uh, at the salaries that were planned, so we can see Sully um, uh, earns 5,000 uh, pounds per month. We see the FTE status that we're going to be uh, meeting of that cost here. We see the, the, the drop um, 
in, in April through June. And if I switch to uh, the other staff member in here, Theodore, remember we, uh, uh, we didn't furlough uh, Theodore, but we had planned a 4% pay rise uh, for Theodore in June. Unfortunately, we're gonna be a pay freeze now, so we can take that out. Uh, and this 10K bonus that we were uh, planning to pay Theodore in December. Unfortunately, we're going to have to reduce that to, to 5K. By the way, you're seeing me entering data like I could put Ash 5K uh, in there. Um, if you don't know the uh, commands for the, uh, uh, for the shortcuts, a planning assistant is always available to help. So if I want to put a splash and absolute value in there uh, of 5,000, you know, I can do that through the, through the UI. And I learn these commands through here. So let's just... Uh, uh, make that 5,000 instead of 10,000. And then I'll go to my um, um, all employees in this cost center. And we see our employee costs of 107,000 uh, here now um, in the cost center. So if I just now go through uh, and look at my uh, cost center plan, we'll see those, uh, we'll see those costs feeding in. So there we see the uh, the salary costs here uh, of 107,000 for the UK management cost center. Uh, and we see uh, how this uh, drops down, uh, you know, during the furlough uh, period. But we also got other costs in here. Now we're not going to use be using the office from April to June. And, um, you know, we're very gracious. Our, uh, <laughs> we have the best landlord in the country, it seems. They've offered us a 75% a rent reduction. So again, I can uh, uh, reflect that in the, in the new budget uh, uh, for that three month period, you know, and although we're gonna have to spend something on, um, you know, remote services, some of our big IT projects have had to be scrapped. So let's just put 30K in for the rest of the year. Crude figures, I just want to come to a new spend value of 805,435. Of course, I could go through this process for each cost center, but I only put a bit of you know, demo data in here to show. So I go back to the PL. And uh, again, we'll do the side by side uh, comparison. And uh, we uh, we will see now our revenue is obviously reduced, and so are our administrative expenses because that management cost center feeds into the admin expenses line on the on the PL. Okay, so part two um, of this is that from this revised budget now, I want to project my balance sheet uh, and then reproduce my cash flow um, statement. So let's move on to the uh, uh, to, to the balance sheet. This is a balance sheet for the uh, uh, for the original uh, budget. You can see the higher figures uh, in there. Uh, that was uh, produced from the original budget using a projection and some uh, some rules where we can map um, P and L accounts to balance sheet accounts, and we can say, for example, you know what our payment terms are, uh, and let's go and adjust this. So uh, I'm just going to. Uh, set this up because when I run this, I want to project for the budget revised version and for the UK um, uh, business for 2020. But I don't want to use my standard projection rules. I'll zoom in here so you can see a little more clearly. So I'm going to duplicate this rule set and I'm going to create a new rule set called uh, crisis projection. Okay, and duplicate that that rule set and when I run it I want to project based on these crisis projection rules now what do these rules look like let's go into the configuration so again this is just sample data obviously with with JEDOX we we put in your chart of accounts and uh, uh, your payment terms and, and and rules in here but you see our our p &L, uh, dimension down here so let's focus on total revenue so the revenue entry um, and we can choose the account to which that maps to on the balance sheet. So we're creating this mapping uh, and it maps to uh, uh, our tr trade and other current receivables line. Now you can see we've been allowing our customers to pay us 50-50 uh, after one month and two months. Okay, uh, but now 
we want to collect our cash uh, a little quicker than that. So actually, after one month deferred, we want to co collect 100% of it. Uh, you can see here some conditional formatting telling me to, uh, uh, you know, correct, uh, uh, correct this. Uh, so that it balances to 100%. But we want to collect 100% after one month. And I'm just going to change this so that we collect, so that we pay more of our costs uh, a little later. So I'll just make a, an adjustment to reflect that. So we're paying 10% after one month, 50% uh, after two months, 40% after three months. So I've just changed the, uh, um, uh, the projection rules. Uh, and this could re relate to any kind of allocation process um, that you may. Uh, have. So having done that, let's go and run this uh, um, projection now. So this is um, it's going to take 20 or 30 seconds or so. But it's taking all the data out of the uh, systems that's been aggregated to that uh, to that PNL, uh, and it's applying those uh, um, uh, projection rules, running the allocations so the right things go to the right balance sheet accounts, uh, and then as well as producing the balance sheet, we'll get a live uh, cash flow report out of that that brings together the appropriate accounts from the PNL and the uh, uh, and the balance sheet cubes. Uh, by the way, the, in order to extract this data from Jedox, apply these rules, write it back to Jedox, it's also using Jedox Integrator, the, uh, uh, the ETL tool. So uh, we have two ways to calculate live as you've seen already with with rules so when i change a number other things calculate or for something which is more of a batch operation like projecting the balance sheet uh, we can use uh, uh, these integrator processes okay so completed successfully so now we can once again go and look at our, um, our balance sheet uh, and we can look at this from the perspective of the uh, um, uh, revised budget the one that we've just uh, um, projected uh, and I'll just zoom uh, back out here so we can uh, see a bit more of the detail this is a monthly view so we can see the the month over month increases decreases opening balance closing balance we we could trace those rules through but it's not what we want to do quite here uh, what's better for us is to compare uh, at, a, at an annual level the original balance sheet versus the new uh, balance sheet you can see those numbers reflected being significantly smaller What's really important is how that maps to the uh, to the cash flow statement. Is this new scenario that I've done this planning on, this what if analysis, if you like, is it going to be okay? Is the business going to survive from a cash flow um, perspective? So I'll go to the uh, uh, to the cash flow uh, statement here, and again compare budget to budget revised, uh, and uh, the answer is that whilst at the end of the year we're going to have significantly less cash we are going to be in the uh, positive. And again, I can take a monthly view. But rather than look at data you know, like this, then uh, of course, for doing this kind of comparison, as you know, you know visualizations will work, much, uh, uh, will work much better. So you can, of course, do reporting in Jedox. Um, let me show you a, a little scenario analysis report that I, uh, that I put, in, put in place. Um, the thing is, it's not Jedox's uh, sweet spot, if you like. So we can do it. You build charts and reports rather like you do in, in Excel. Um, but we can't, obviously, we don't have the power of, of, say, a click, which is why we partner and integrate with Click. Uh, but just finishing the story, let's just look at our net increase, decrease. Uh, yeah, forget January, that's gone and that's bad data. But uh, on a monthly level, we're not going to actually lose cash in, in any month, which is good. Now, for deeper further analysis, let me take this data out to click. So again, when I press this button, I'm running one of those Jedox integrator jobs. It's taking the data that we've just used to that uh, 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 click environment that, uh, that we saw earlier. So I'm just going to uh, go and... Uh, reload that data that I exported from Jedox. Of course, as you saw in the first demo, uh, in a real uh, uh, server environment, we can automate all of this. But there, I've just updated it in less than a second. So now if we look at our um, reports in, uh, in Click, of course, we've still got our, our Jedox report up here where we can, you know, compare side by side. If I select budget revise now, uh, we'll see it. Uh, um, side by side with the original budget. So we can still use 
and interact with those JDOCs reports and click um, and might be useful for these financial types of statements. But now what we see is, you know, our headline figures here for the uh, our revised budget version. So there's that 7.8 million of, of cash that will still be positive uh, at, the, uh, at the end of the year, for example. And we can work through um, the uh, you know comparison. So prior year is always a red line. The blue line is the original budget. The yellow line is the uh, is the revised budget. And then of course, using the power of uh, of click, we can get much deeper uh, with our um, our analysis. Uh, as you all know, so again here we can compare by month any of our, our measures. So revenue, uh, your total. Uh, 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 cash and cash equivalents. So as again, as you see, you know, we're going to be a bit worse than last year and way off plan, but we are still going to remain positive in cash. And you can see uh, when we look at these numbers, you can see that that drop off uh, from February through March, picking up again the revenue in December, just like we planned. Uh, and here, I really like this pair of waterfall charts that shows us originally how we were going to get from our prior year to our new budget our prior year performance to our new budget on a month by month growth basis. But now we've had to revise, you know, we see how that drops down after February to, to, to meet our new revised plan. If you imagine doing the work that we've just done there in, uh, in spreadsheets, as, as maybe many of you have had to do over the, uh, over the last few weeks, you know, that would be a time consuming exercise uh, but with the power of JDOCs you see how uh, uh, at a high level at least we you know create those new scenarios and then combine that with the use of click to compare and analyze those scenarios and we could of course now revisit it make several different scenarios before we decided which was going to be our, our go forward budget for 2020. So Gus uh, with that I'll uh, hand it back to you. Uh, thank you Martin for that fantastic demonstration. Uh, you know, it's really clear that Click to all of us is uh, important and valuable in terms of a platform. And uh, it's great for analysis and reporting. But JEDOX complements Click with a rich planning and modeling and forecasting capability that is seamless. Uh, and it's seamless because it integrates with systems on premise or in the cloud, uh, either way. And of course, uh, as I said earlier on, a lot of the data entry is done by Excel in our companies with all the potential uh, chances of errors and, and knowledge being retained in, in the owner of the Excel. But with JEDOX, it's all documented and, and all, uh, all very clear. And, and if, if you are wedded to Excel, then you have an Excel plugin or, if, uh, or JEDOX has a web interface as you've seen or even a JEDOX mobile, uh, I mean, data entry ability and, and the ability to view as well. And of course, uh, on the slide, you can see on the left-hand side, there are pre-built models available as well. For example, in finance, in, in, in HR, in purchasing, the list is endless. Um, so basically users can get a fast start. 